And welcome back to the North Star Takes podcast with Bailey Palicki and Jacob Liberta. You can find all our videos here on our channel, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And feel free to drop a like as well, especially if you're a Vikings fan after that thrilling week three victory over the Seattle Seahawks. Skull. Exactly, skull, baby. It feels so good to get that first win out of the way. Um, and today we're just going to kind of go over what we saw. Um, had a couple days here to di- digest um, what we saw against Seattle and so let's just jump right into it, Liberta. What is the best thing you saw Sunday against the Seahawks? Man, this is refreshing to actually uh, talk about this after a win right. finally in the 2021 season because I feel like there's so many different things we could potentially talk about uh, with this specific subject. But I guess I, got, I just got to say, really, it's the whole team coming together and just playing well in all three phases. I understand that the defense definitely started slow. I was not happy with the first three drives. But beyond that, I feel like the whole whole team was just clicking on all cylinders. Everything was just – felt like it was smooth sailing, and we didn't really have – honestly, once we got in the second half, it didn't feel like there was a lot of doubt to the outcome of the game. Like, it felt like right. we were the better team on Sunday and we were going to win the game, and there just was nothing more to it. Like, we just dominated out there. So I was, I was really happy. I'd say the best thing is just – that the whole team, like from um, special teams to the offense, defense, the whole thing just felt like it was smooth sailing. So I'd say that's the best thing. How about you? Yeah, I would agree with you. I, my focus was just going to be the offense and specifically Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Um, we've both kind of talked about how we're not the biggest Kirk guys. No. Um, we've questioned <laughs> if he's going to be here beyond this year. Mm-hmm. And we've kind of been in the camp that would be in favor of moving on from him. But he has started off fantastic this season, which is not his M.O., um, usually he starts off pretty slow, actually, and that's usually why the Vikings end up dropping a game at the beginning of the season. Um, so he's he's looked very good so far, and it, it hasn't been his fault that they're off to this one and two start. So I would I would dare to say he's in the MVP conversation. I mean, the numbers he's putting up are elite. Um, I think he's like second or third overall in total QBR for the NFL. Yep. Um, I think after tonight he should be. I want to say second because I think only Tom Brady has a higher PFF grade. I think Jalen Hurts did coming into tonight, but I mm-hmm. think after the, um, or after the way the Monday night game has uh, shook out, I think Jalen Hurts is going to fall down a little bit. Yeah, I would agree. I think uh, yeah, Jalen Hurts looks a little rough. He looks like a young quarterback that's still kind of feeling his way mm-hmm. in there. So mm-hmm. yeah, Kirk eight eight touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, he's already almost up to a thousand yards after three games. So yeah. you love seeing that. It, it appears that Clint Kubiak's willing to open up the offense more for him. And in turn, it's, it's turning out well. I mean, Kirk hasn't made the backbreaking mistake, you know, throwing a pick six or anything. He's been very um, safe with the ball. He's made good decisions. He's been quick, honestly. Like I feel like this year we're throwing more quick passes than we ever have, which I've been begging for us to do. Cause you see Aaron Rodgers do it against us every year. So yeah, I'm, I'm very true. happy with the way the offense looks and specifically Kirk Cousins. And there's a small part of me that's hopeful that he can keep it up for the long haul. But um, I guess I need to see it to believe it to be 100 percent sure. For sure. I'm right there with you. And not, I was just going to say, too, I think I saw that out there as well, that in his last 13 starts, Kirk has thrown 32 touchdowns, only three interceptions, which is wow. That's that's pretty wild. And then, like, if you uh, give him another four games here, if he continues to rattle off these good performances, man, that, that ratio is going to look kind of ridiculous <laughs> over yeah. like the course of the, his last season's worth of games, basically. So I'm really curious to see if he can keep it rolling. Cause like you just got done saying, I mean, he's had these stretches in his career where he plays a really good month, but we haven't seen it like wire to wire the whole season. And obviously that's some, that can be a little bit hard or too much to ask, I should say, but at the same time, you know, we're kind of paying him like a top five quarterback. So I mean, right. I hope he can put together, mostly a good season obviously you're probably gonna have a clunker or two in there it feels like a kirk there's like these stretches of games where he's also bad so you just want to avoid that as much as possible yeah 100 percent. so we'll kind of transition into this next talking point which is kind of i think going to be the main um talking point for us here today yeah the offense has looked extremely good uh we talked about it on sunday after the game um putting up nearly 30 points a game um keeping us in every game just giving us a chance really, which is something we haven't seen from a Vikings offense in a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you believe that with the skill players we have with the ascending offensive line and with Kirk playing at probably the best we've ever seen him, do you think this offense has the potential to be elite and remain elite throughout the course of a season? I definitely do. I think the big X factor here is just offensive line play through three weeks compared to the rest of the league. 
the Vikings rank fourth in pass blocking efficiency according to PFF, and that's yes. a huge. It's just a that's drastic improvement. That's a drastic improvement from where we've been for how long now? Where it's like usually we're like in the bottom four of the league. Now we're in the top four, and that's right. just incredible. And and you're seeing good results. Obviously, we'd like to have a better record than one and two, but at the same time, a few plays here and there, all of a sudden you're three and all. But yep. at the same time, uh, this is also elevating Kirk's play, and I think a lot of Vikings fans would say this is the best they've ever seen Kirk play. So I think if this offensive line can continue on this this trend of good play, I I don't see why we can't be elite. I mean, we've always had the skill players from uh, Kirk has the arm talent. Dalvin is just Arguably the best running back in football, like most complete yeah. back. And then you got your receivers. You got Thielen and Jefferson. Now you got Osborne entering the party, and he's been oh, yeah. very good. And then even Conklin having having a uh, cool yeah. game against the Seahawks. So I think there, this offense does definitely have the potential to be elite. I feel like we're creeping towards that as long as the offensive line can remain consistent and and just playing. Not even like they don't even have to be fourth in the league. If they're like top ten or at least top half, I think you're going to still see a lot of good results. Yeah, I agree with you 100. percent Really, they were really good last year too in terms of yards. Yeah. What it comes down to is just finishing drives. Um, exactly. We kind of saw that in the second half yesterday. They mm-hmm. settled for a couple field goals. So it'd yep. be nice to see them finish off more drives. Obviously, you can't complain scoring 30 points, but no, I'll take um, it. Going back to the offensive line point, though, the the one guy that's been super impressive is Oli Udo. That yes. guy was a tackle. Um, he was what a sixth round pick, I believe, sixth or seventh round pick. On an Elon. Oh, to Elon, so like, small school. Yeah, where's that? <laughs> Just a complete developmental player. They thought he would maybe turn into like their swing tackle of the future. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe replace Rashad Hill down the line. This year they kind of forced him to go into guard because they draft Wyatt Davis. He's not really ready. Um, Dakota Dozier is a dumpster fire, so you can't <laughs> let him play. So they kind of throw Ole Udo in at right guard by default, and he steps right in, and he's having a great season so far. I think I saw he's the eighth highest uh, graded offensive guard in the NFL, which is insane That's... for a guy making that transition. So exactly, you get that, was... that kind of play. Um, Ezra Cleveland has improved in his second year. He's He's a top half of the league guard. Um, Brian O'Neill is one of the best right tackles in the league. Garrett sure. Bradbury, he's a little iffy, but the last two games he's been better, so that's at least um, promising. And then mm-hmm. Rashad Hill hasn't been very good, but like we've kind of talked about before as well, he just needs to be a placeholder until uh, Christian Derrissaw is ready to go. Exactly, and hopefully Derrissaw, if I had to guess, and like we talked about in our uh, post-game wrap-up after the win on Sunday, I think uh, – there, saw uh, it'll probably take a little bit to get ramped up, but hopefully around the bye week, maybe after that, he can be back and really get in a groove with this offensive line. So then by the end yeah. of the season, we're really playing our best ball and putting our best foot forward. Because like you said, Rashad is probably the liability in this offensive line right now. But at the same time, it's like I'm not going to expect a ton out of him because he's been a career backup, so we shouldn't really set the bar that high right. for him. But as far as everybody else, I'm, I'm pretty encouraged what we've seen these last couple games. So I'm pretty excited with the way this offense is trending. We just got to keep the trend rolling in the next week against Cleveland and see if we can pick up another big win. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, like you mentioned, I think it definitely is starting to look like Darisaw won't be playing until after the bye. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just he's been limited in practice all along since he's been back. Um, now it's week four, and it doesn't appear like he's close to playing. So you got Rashad Hill probably playing week four, and then you got two more games against the Lions and the Panthers. And you could argue it'd be nice to ease him in against a team like the Lions. True. Um, and, you know, because I think they – do they come out with Dallas after the bye on Sunday Night Football? They do on Halloween, yep. Yeah, so I, I think uh, I saw Dexter Lawrence – is or De- DeMarcus Lawrence? Yeah, DeMarcus Lawrence is out for the year. He is. Yep. Um, so that's a devastating blow to Dallas. So you could possibly throw him in in that situation against, you know – not Like a Parsons. He, they just converted him to defensive yeah, end. Yeah, <laughs> and he, look, he, he actually looks pretty good at that he's, spot too. But He's got a lot of speed, but I, I don't know. I'm still a little skeptical about that. Yeah, I don't. So I don't know if you'd want to throw him in in a situation like that. But rookie on rookie, maybe you feel like he can win, though. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I, they'll they'll find a spot for him to come back. I'm sure. But it it really with three games left until the bye, it's kind of starting to make sense that they would wait until after the fact to get him back in there. Yeah, and at the same time, I feel like I would hope you feel like you can get by. Obviously, Cleveland. That's going to be a, an animal on its own with those head rushers they got there. It all starts and ends with Miles Garrett. But then once you get beyond that, you'd like to think you can get away with it against Detroit and Carolina, hopefully, and then give them another week on top of that during the bye to really hopefully 
ramp up to full practicing, playing with the ones, get yep. plenty of reps. So then, like you said, he could potentially come out with that uh, post by week game against the uh, Cowboys in week eight. So yeah, absolutely. So one last uh, point here. So we talked mm-hmm. three three more games until the bye. Um, the Browns game clearly the toughest, but it's a home game. Then you get Detroit at home, and then you have to go to Carolina, who is currently three and zero. But I'm still not a big believer in Sam Darnold and what they have well, going on there. So especially when McCaffrey is going to be out now for yes. I think an unknown period of time. They're not putting him on the IR, but like that's not like he's going to be back anytime soon. Yeah, so maybe the Vikings could dodge a bullet and not have to go up against him. And even if they do, maybe he's not a hundred percent. So true. Do you think this could be the start of a run here? I think. You know, if, if you can beat Cleveland, I think you can be sitting pretty dang good going into the bye. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And honestly, I'm going to stick to my word. Like I told you, right after we got done losing that Arizona game, I said that we're going to win the next four in a row. I know it. it you did it really, say that. It really is just a domino effect where I felt like the Seahawks, it could be the Browns too. I think the Browns are very talented in their own right, but I kind of felt like the Seahawks are kind of just a hurdle for the Vikings. That's pretty hard to clear. And right. now that we have – it feels like the, the plan has fallen into place. Obviously, you got another uh, tough challenge coming up this weekend, but I feel like if you can clear Seattle and Cleveland at home, I I don't see any reason why you couldn't against Detroit, too. Right. I feel like even if you lose to Seattle and Cleveland, I feel like you should still beat Detroit. And then, like you mentioned, obviously you go on the road, but with Carolina, I still feel like they're not quite a 3 and old team. as the, or they're, they're not quite an undefeated team, I would say. I don't, right. I don't think they're – really a uh, finished product yet. I think they're taking steps in the right direction with second-year coach Matt Rule there. But at the same time, I feel like we're, we should still be better than them, even though it's a road game. I feel, I feel like we should be able to take care of business and uh, cross my fingers. And you know what? I'm, I'm just holding true to what I said last week and saying we're, we're going to run the table here in the bye week and be 4-2, and, and then everybody will be able to hopefully be satisfied with that. That I think a lot of people before the season have been happy with a 4-2 yeah. start to the, going in the bye. So let's hope we get there. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think I feel like Cleveland's definitely a winnable game. I know they're a good team, but it just it feels like, you know, the Vikings historically do well against an AFC team at home at noon. Um, like it, it just seems like the perfect formula for them. They finally have a noon game again, which is nice. True. Um, Baker Mayfield, his first time at U.S. Bank Stadium with a loud crowd noise. So I think that that could throw some um wrenches at him as well so yeah yes. i think if you can beat the browns it's critical that you don't look past the lions and the panthers like you truly have to take it one game at a time because we've seen the vikings take some opponents lightly in the past like a few oh, years ago when that comes back to bite you we were favored to crush the bills and the bills yep. end up beating us in a nightmare game at home yeah so that was yeah okay. and then if you can get to four and two at the bye then coming out of the bye you have a huge sunday night game against the dallas cowboys which if you can win that one and get to five and two i mean then you You're feel looking. like you got a little bit more breathing room if you're going to drop a game or two in there when right after the Cowboys. Yes. Then we're going coast to coast the next two weeks. We first go to Baltimore to play a pretty good Ravens team, and mm-hmm. then we're going to go out west and go play the uh, Tele Chargers coming fresh off their uh, win against Kansas City this past weekend. It looks pretty impressive. So Yeah, that's going to be a tough stretch. I think you're going to want to be 5-2 and two going into that stretch. Um, yeah, I think so too. And I would also add the one thing that – or one of the many things – or at least a handful of things that concerns me about Cleveland is actually if anybody in this league or among the very few people in this league who probably know Mike Zimmer and his defense more than almost anybody, I'd probably say Stefanski's right up there just because Stefanski was here for how long? So he was here for the first, like, what was it, six? Yeah, it would have been six years of Zimmer, and I feel like he, he's probably around them all the time and yeah. knows exactly what, what the Vikings like to do. So I think that's that's a little bit scary that it's like, uh, coming back as an assistant, a longtime assistant, and now has his own talented team. So yeah, I think that's a little bit that's a little bit daunting. But at the same time, uh, you never know. It could be the ultimate chess match, which hopefully will make for a really fun game. So yeah. I'm kind of I'm kind of hoping that's the way it turns out. You know, another shootout type game. Honestly, I'd be down for because I'm kind of resigned to the fact that the defense isn't going to be top ten this year. So I think if if we can just hang in there, like kind of like we did against Seattle, and if Kirk can keep playing well and the offense can keep humming. I think we have a really good shot. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I think this is going to be a very offensive driven team. Our success or lack thereof will yeah. hinge on this offense. I think the defense will get better every week, in my opinion. But at the same time, I don't think we can. Uh, yeah, like you said, at this point, I don't think we expect it to be great. 
but they just need to have some timely stops in there. Like, obviously, they got ran over the first two drives against Seattle, yeah. but, like, they really hunkered down in that third quarter, which was huge for us because then we limited time of possession for Russell Wilson, and we also uh, capitalized on a couple drives there to put the game really out of reach. So I think that's going to be important for a lot of our games this year. Yeah, um, we'll get into this more on Saturday when we do our pregame sure. uh, predictions as well. So mm -hmm. that's going to do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe as well if you haven't already. Um, and please feel free to spread the word to your sports-loving friends. Um, give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram, and for sure leave your comments below how you're feeling about this Vikings team, um, if you're loving their offense and think they can be you know, an elite-tier offense in the NFL. And if you think the Vikings are about to go on a run here and start shocking some people. So leave your comments below for sure. Thank you for watching.